Um, I'm Yosin. I'm giving a talk today called the um, Augmented Reality Interfaces for the um, Internet of Things. Um, so, primarily this started as um, a live demo that I made that won this grand prize at, yeah, another hackathon. Um, so, I decided to kind of extend it a lot more into a platform that I've, I've kind of been calling the in, uh, Interface Reality. Uh, interface for reality. So um, I'm going to try to live demo. Uh, I guess this is kind of the um, if we had a remote access living room through this virtualized simula simulation, you can see um, some of the more uh, sort of common expected interface types you would uh, see when you have augmented reality interface for the Internet of Things. Um, from a very high level perspective, it's basically, uh, let me full screen this. So everyone got the URL, Every, anyone can download this at areality3d.com slash IOT. It's WebGL, so load it up on a uh, modern web browser on your uh, laptop. So, um, so from kind of a very high level perspective, when you have computer vision recognition for any object in the real world, uh, it's almost like action at a distance. So for example, um, let's t I guess for now, let's turn off the, uh, the phone. And you can see this is what our, our living room looks like. We have a mess off in the corner over there, uh, right here. And we also have lights, you know, the usual IoT lights you can turn on and other sort of things. But say we're like sitting on the couch and we want to like turn on the um, thermostat with Computer vision, you can literally do just that. Um, I'll turn on my phone and then I can actually recognize whatever object I want. And assuming that it's connected to the cloud somewhere, um, typical IoT devices, you can then API access it to uh, IO from it, uh, say, find out what temperature things are. In this case, I'm going to increase the temperature so it's a little bit warmer. Um, I don't know, let's make it 74. And what's also cool is that beyond just um, uh, physical devices, you can also uh, connect them to real devices, such as, um, in this case, we have a plant. So you can, um, similar to uh, these other devices, you can basically put um, moisture meters and sunlight meters on plants and then connect them to the IoT, uh, the cloud, or whichever backend system you prefer uh, to be agnostic here, uh, and then you can uh, get the readings from it wherever you are, not just at home, but elsewhere. But at home, say you're lazy and you're just, I don't know, maybe watching TV in the corner right here and you want to find out if your plant is being watered. And you can easily, um, through computer vision, recognize that this plant is, you know, the plant that's right here, the really big leaf one. And uh, if you have a watering system set up, you can then interactively drag the moisture, or increase the moisture, of course. You probably wouldn't want to decrease the moisture. Well, unless your, your plant is actually uh, really uh, sort of like getting moldy or something. So let's just give it 100%. So it's like well water. Um, so you can also change the sunlight by, uh, if you have connected drapes, uh, you can also IoT connect to your drapes and then you know, uh, change the sunlight proportions. Um, so basically, this, these are some very quick sort of high level examples of when you have computer vision access of things, you can literally, it's like action at, at a distance. Uh, and well, assuming you have the connected items to input and output uh, the data of interest from. So um, before I go further, um, oftentimes when people think of augmented reality or an augmented reality future, they think about something that's more like this. Um, I'll turn the phone off so you can see what the, just the living room actually just has like this uh, regular sort of um, magazine booklet thing. But now you have a lot of at spam, spam advertisement or whatever it's called. Um, that's kind of, I mean, and I don't know if the killer app or the killer um, business for augmented reality would be like AdSense in the real world, but uh, this is kind of often the um, sort of the misnomer, uh, where basically you would be like blasted with all kinds of advertisements pretty much um, everywhere. Um, I guess what's co cool is that you can find out more about things and, um, uh, well, you can also um, turn off augmented view and it, it looks like a regular uh, living room again. Um, but where Internet of Things comes in and where it's become very interesting is you can do um, things like, an example that I'm going to show later is um, where I'm going to actually uh, 
use an AR interface for the Raspberry Pi I have here and actually show into it. Um, I have a virtualized interface here where, um, let's see, turn this on. Um, there we go. I'm gonna back up a little so you guys can see this better. Um, and press the escape to unlock the mouse. Uh, so what's interesting is that you can also virtually show into this virtual uh, Raspberry Pi. In theory, I actually have not tested this part fully out. I literally just like packed this viewer together last night. Um, Oh, partially because I wasn't aware this was a very small workshop. I thought it was going to be much of a one versus a lot of people thing to, to, to like demo um, virtualize. Anyways, I'll show this working on the device later. I don't think I have the full emulator fully wrapped here for this uh, thing here. Um, Uh, for those of us just joining uh, me now, feel free to whip out your laptop and go to aready3d.com slash IoT. Um, I'm doing kind of a um, live demo where you guys can all participate and discover um, kind of a different lens in a virtualized simulated living room. Um, so this is actually a demo that I'm going to be live demoing in, uh, after I kind of go through this uh, quick overview here. Um, so continuing onwards, um, so of course another thing you can do with augmented reality is easily pin notes and other things um, on your artwork or say more useful things. Um, so in a way it's almost like Twitter in real life um, or being able to put like post-it notes pretty much everywhere and also be able to reply to them and know who posted them. and. Well, uh, also, beyond viewing in AR, you can also, uh, because this is really just data, render in a um, augmented uh, reality or say like on a, on a 3D layer uh, to transform like this. You can also render as a traditional app somewhere else for perhaps easier view viewing once you have a, a ton of um, post-it notes like, all over a particular surface. Um, okay, so navigate to the hallway and I'm going to turn off the phone pressing escape turning the phone off and so the hallway is where we can check out other rooms in this sort of hypothetical simulated house um, I was planning to add like more interesting sort of AR things for faucets and for the toilets but I didn't quite get the time to um, but uh, you can probably imagine all sorts of interesting AR interfaces that can happen from those things. Um, but uh, here we have the plant again. It's getting, I think, a little bit more sunlight in, in, the, um, in this uh, bathroom here. Um, and of course, uh, we have, okay, we have the uh, local temperature of where uh, we are here in the bathroom and the ability to, if we want to, Increase the heat to make it like warmer and stuff. Let's make it, I don't know, 75 degrees in the bathroom. So yeah, literally, um, you could be, say, using a waterproof a case for your phone in the bathtub. You can change the temperature um, at a distance. Uh, and for setups where there's different thermostats, it's often easier just to like point, you know, at whatever interface or whatever device you actually want to uh, change and have um, computer vision AR recognize that so you can actually, instead of having to enter the device name or look it up on a list, um, directly see which one you're changing. Uh, so this is kind of more of an idealized interface. It's very sort of simplified, but um, the concept carries through, I hope. Um, so that's the bathroom. Uh, let's kind of keep navigating through this sort of hypothetical house here. And so the bedrooms are, uh, you can change the lighting and you can also, um, same thing with the thermostat. So, um, let's see, if we look at the thermostats, great, so we can find out what temperature it is and be able to change the temperature and the rest. Um, I don't know, make it like a little bit warmer. 71 degrees. And okay, I'll turn my phone off so we're not um, like texting while walking or something. Uh, the same with the second bedroom. Um, so 
as you can see, like in a regular view, there's nothing there, but um, when you put your phone on, uh, in this case, the phone doesn't have to be a phone. Uh, this could be like a head-mounted display, for example. The idea is that um, you have computer vision to recognize what is in front of you so that you can display a interface that you can then interact with reality in a very intuitive, like basically at the speed of sight. And let's make it really cold in here. Well, actually, let's make it kind of rubble. Okay. Anyways, um, so and its input and also uh, sending of data uh, through REST-based APIs, uh, but just basically in a different kind of 3D rendered interface. Um, now we finally get to the kitchen where there's um, potentially quite a number of interesting IoT devices available. Um, for example, we have uh, the classic connected refrigerator where uh, you can see what's actually inside your fridge uh, just in case you're too lazy to open it or if you're just like standing in your living room going, what do I actually have in there to eat? Um, and there are a lot of interesting sort of metadata as you can actually uh, tie to each food item such as, okay, is that bell pepper about to uh, go bad or something? Um, and with um, more advanced computer vision, you can actually identify individual um, bell peppers to know, okay, this is the one that you got three weeks ago versus like this other one is just from like, I don't know, two days ago. Um, of course, if you're really close and visually inspected, I'm sure you can kind of tell the one that's molting versus the one that's not. Um, but yeah, basically, um, this is like another sort of um, computer vision based sort of like, look into what an AR uh, interface for IoT things would be. Um, you can have basically, like think of like just machine level, machine learning sort of stuff that's, you know, even as you're away and not looking at this, it could be processing, um, I guess this is like just almost like a textbook example where it's processing every single item in your fridge from say a webcam to usually um, in, uh, installed somewhere and uh, finding out like the rate of, um, I don't know, a wilting or something of like a, a vegetable inside. Um, and it's a kind of a different kind of interesting an analytics that you can probably get from that. Um, that's kind of a, probably a very pedantic, pedantic example. Uh, but uh, the idea is that um, you can see things and that wealth of data, um, beyond just being able to identify things, you can also use it to track a lot of different kinds of things. And also in this case, let's make our fridge much, much, much colder. It's like too, too hot in there. Let's make it like, I don't know, 45 degrees, I don't know. That's the typical temperature for a refrigerator, right? Does anyone know that offhand by any chance? I'm kind of glad this is not a real home because um, I'm probably going to be responsible for a lot of uh, items in the fridge going bad. Uh, let's just freeze it just in case, right? Okay, so, all right, so, um, this is also something that was kind of cool. Um, I discovered recently that Nespresso has like a connected version. Um, although I think, to be honest, you don't really need to purchase the connected version. You can just take a regular Nespresso and probably kind of DIY it with like Raspberry and other things um, so that you can then um, activate and stuff at a distance, probably half your Nespresso. But it's, it's cool that they have like a, a version where there's no work required and you can actually um, say you're like, I don't know, uh, out for a morning run or something and you're like 20 minutes from home or like 10 minutes from home and you can at a distance use your phone and just like have your Nespresso ready like right when you get back. Um, uh, but uh, I guess more if you're at home and you're like sitting here and you're like, I don't know, sitting at a chair at the table really lazy and you want Nespresso, you can also just, um, when you have computer vision here, you can recognize that this is an Nespresso machine and it recognizes uh, you know various things about it. And uh, you can make it make coffee for you or you can also find out that the water level is only 20% and you need to like refill it or you're going to have a very little coffee. Um, so there's like a lot of different sort of, a lot of interesting potential that can happen once um, you apply the general concept of using um, visual, computer vision based identification of objects as like, think of it as like a, like a primary key to access a particular um, device in the network. Um, and then a lot of interesting sort of sub things you can do, such as like once you have that data, you can find out um, other sort of micro details about the particular IoT device of interest. Um, so I'll just like go back to the living room again and finish with the classic nest and uh, plant example for those people arriving late. Uh, and um, 
and uh, basically repeating a kind of a common theme is um, the sort of high level version of um, what this is doing is you're recognizing whatever device you have and then by recognizing that or in, in this case it doesn't have to be a device it could be like a plant you, um, think of it as like the um, whatever trigger you want to identify to load an interface so in this case we have um, little sort of water meters uh, installed down in the plant but um, the plant itself is what's actually being recognized uh, so that it's much more easier. You don't have to actually uh, bend down and actually find the actual IoT device that's installed in the, in the soil of the plant. Uh, and then from, uh, from this information, you can then like try to give it, I don't know, drain some water because maybe it's getting kind of moldy and stuff. Um, so um, computer vision access that gives you input and output. Um, so it's, in a way, it's kind of like a next generation form of user interface um, and I think beyond the, um, the box this can also work with a HoloLens or um, any of the AR or mixed reality sort of head-mounted displays that have basically a camera stream that you can um, process and uh, of course any device that you can put on the network that you can then send data back and forth um, and so this is kind of just an example I kind of created um, very quickly um, last night like oh, a pieces of these have all been um, live demos um, at various hackathons and such um, so this is a um, probably a more common use case where it's like okay you have some regular book and you can find the items you can actually, you can actually buy from that um, so I think for now I'm gonna jump to the live demo um, but for other people coming in late who want to try this out uh, this is available at areality3d.com slash IOT and you should probably be on a desktop browser and not mobile for this uh, it's a uh, serious web GL. Um, well, um, I'm going to switch over to the live demo meanwhile um, are there any questions uh -huh. So there's actually, oh, that's actually a good, 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 good question. Let me kind of show um, different forms of um, recognition. So um, object recognition is the one that's more the most interesting because it's able to generalize. Um, well, the problem is also sometimes it generalizes too much, and it may think that oh, this is the same as the other um, big leaf plant you have somewhere else. So what you should ideally do for something like you want to identify a plant that you have multiples of in a house is to use both object and also um, kind of the more classic marker-based sort of augmented reality. So this is a very classic sort of marker-based AR where you have basically um, flat image targets that you're trying to detect. Um, I guess this is also known as homography tracking, basically. Um, so in this case, you can use both a mix of that um, object tracking as well as because the leaves, we can actually um, take advantage of the big leaves. Think of them as gigantic pages or something. Um, and also the configuration of them. Um, all of that can uh, contribute to helping identify this, uh, I'm very bad with plant names, you know, the, this big leaf plant versus the one in the other room. Um, so the nice part about the demo I'm showing is that it's actually a piece of um, the live demo. It's a piece of electronic item, which is very, because of the circuit board, it's very, very uniquely identified, even more so than many of the consumer devices that you see, even though they all claim to be different, um, even if some of them are just different in kind of a tiny, you know, bezel or like, you know, the curve on the side or something. Um, so this is actually um, the live demo I'm going to jump to. And let's see. Let's get to IoT. And... Alright. So um, here we have a real Raspberry Pi. Um, this is a live demo. So, audience. Um, well, okay, the lighting is interesting. So, let's see. Um, I'll hold it up a bit. So. Hello audience, say hello to yourself. Uh, okay, okay, now take a picture <laughs> when it's tracking. All right, picture, it's tracking, yay. Okay, cool. So, um, this is a hack that I literally came up with at totally like the last minute. Um, 
I went to like, I don't know, three different hackathons that weekend, and this one was kind of a toss up at the last minute. Um, and I literally went two hours before the deadline and just to check out the same because I figured, why not, you know? And they were giving every attendee um, a Raspberry Pi. However, um, as you guys know, uh, you can't really do much with a Raspberry Pi if you don't have a monitor. So the hackathon, like, it was very crowded. It's like, kind of like this. Like, no one had, I mean, there was like one or two monitors and there's like, I don't know, a hundred or more people there. And so a lot of people had, it was an IoT hackathon, by the way, a lot of people had these Raspberry Pis and they were not able to actually hack with it at the hackathon. And I was like, okay, um, why not create an augmented reality thin client for um, for this? Um, and so it just happens that um, I basically already have a lot of the um, the frameworks and stuff to rapidly prototype this. Um, the um, kind of the new thing on my side was okay. I, I discovered there were a lot of interesting open source things for Raspberry Pi, such as um, there was something where you can pipe in a shell command directly to a node script, and then I mean it's very insecure, but uh, I mean for for a hack it was sufficient. <laughs> So literally, this is um, I like the hack. I was just like basically piping. Think of it as like a web form that I'm basically um on, on my phone. I'm basically sending it into on, on the web server, and it's just piping in like shell commands as like a parameter on um the web form. So um, in this case, um, I already typed in the first command. Um, I already pre-connected this. Um, so uh, the first command, of course, is ls, and you can see the basic files on uh, you know the Ruby Raspberry Pi that everyone just got a swag. Uh, we can also find out other things about it, um, such as, okay, PWD, where are we? Um, all right, we're in slash home slash hi. Great. Um, and we can also find out the top running processes, study curiosity. Oh, by the way, um, the temperature and stuff is all being like monitored. Uh, as well, the usual things that you want to do with um, IoT systems, and yeah, there's like a few interesting processes um, happening and stuff. Uh, and then of course the usual, you know, commands like there's some stuff on the string. Let's just clear it. Um, so um, it's basically a example of a AR interface, uh, another example of an AR interface for the Internet of Things, um, but in this case, it's perhaps something that um, it's a lot more universal to um, a lot of us here. Um, and also a lot more useful, it's um, whenever you have a Raspberry Pi, you no longer have to carry a screen with you, you just need to keep it with your phone. Um, the only downside is you do have to connect the Raspberry Pi to the Internet first, so um, it's more, it's it, if you're in a hackathon setting, only one person has a screen, so you borrow their screen to connect your Raspberry Pi, and then you're like, okay, now you're connected, you don't need their screen anymore, um, you can use your phone, I guess. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it would be kind of interesting if there's kind of a way to maybe save the boot state for like the last, maybe the hotspot connection it's connected to, so you, every time it boots up, it doesn't have to go, oh, which, what is this supposed to connect to or something. Um, that There's probably another script out there to do that, but um, this is just kind of an interesting um, hackathon sort of, App that really demonstrates uh, how uh, you can have input output that's um, in this case very useful uh, even on sort of a hack history basis. Um, um, cool. So I think I kind of went through this rather fast. So I have probably a lot of time. That's probably a good thing. So I can just like show you guys a lot of other more interesting things. Um, so I deliberately try to keep this very sort of non-commercial, except for the Nest, because the Nest has pretty much become kind of the, uh, I don't know, the de facto standard for like IoT. Um, they have a super simple API to work with, um, and like, whenever people think of connected thermostats, they think of the Nest. Um, but um, there's something else I made called the, currently it's called um, Alexa Pet, but it's probably going to be renamed like Tiny Fox due to like branding reasons. Um, so, try it out on WebGL, so the internet downloads. Um, but yeah, literally, it, it's, um, think of it as IoT pet. So um, there's a lot of interesting creative applications that can happen when you have power of computer vision and also the power of accessing connected devices, right? <laughs> so Alexa pet literally lets you have a pet with your Amazon Alexa. You can like actually go into your Alexa. It lives in your Alexa, actually. Um, yeah. 
and you can, um, well, okay, this is actually demonstrating like how it's uh, set up with the Alexa skill set, um, everything, and also the Android app you can download. Let's go through that. Um, so I'm actually, this is actually made for another, another hackathon. Um, I could have done more serious object tracking, but instead I just use um, very, like, very, very simple like, homography tracking where I basically printed this. Um, this marker and I wrapped it like this is anyone can print this it's not like special paper or anything I printed this and then I wrapped it around the Alexa also I, I called it something that marketing people might call it like it's a magic echo cloak and cover um, and then anyone can print it and put it on your Alexa so it looks like a really cool case as well um, and then uh, so uh, basically the process to um, have it connect to Alexa was um, to kind of make it not so um, well, basically, you need a unique connection from the app to Alexa. So we devised a system that Alexa, because Alexa only allows for verbal input. And uh, there are a lot of words that Alexa can't, I mean, it's like it's going to get some homonym, misspell, or whatever, right? So uh, we found out that the NATO um, alphabet and also the numbers were very useful. So the first thing that happens to pair your phone to Alexa is you tell Alexa the address of your pet. And in this case, this is 12 kilo, and then um, you see that, and then... See, maybe I can turn the audio on. Um, so this, this parts of it is kind of cool because you can hear the pet like bark and stuff. Um, except I don't have an audio button on this. Um, let's see. Uh, is there like an audio jack or something that I can plug into? Well, you guys can also just check it out online as well. Um, and also, whenever Amazon approves it, this is like leading edge from like last week. Um, you can grab it too. Um, yeah, basically, you can say commands like, hey Alexa, tell pet to sit, and then the pet sits. Um, here we go, it's the command section. You can also tap to like, you know, have the pet like walk around. It's, uh, I mean, it's the fact that the pet is like in your living room with the mess you have in your, in your living room and like interacting, like it's actually running around Alexa. Um, and then when you're sick of having it run around, you can tell it to like go to sleep or to like sit. Um, tell it to play and the rest. I was just kind of jump through. Okay, there is kind of a fun mode where, um, like initially I actually tried prototyping it as, um, Imagine if your pet were the size of Alexa, right? Uh, except that's not as fun as having Alexa, uh, when I say Alexa, I mean Amazon Echo, of course. I'm having the pet interact with Echo. Uh, and so there's a super size mode where it just becomes like big like that and replaces your uh, device. Uh, and so that's where the pet currently is sitting. That's where the Echo is. Uh, and um, I guess I'll show the video so you can kind of like see. So this is like the smaller version of it. So it's like on that table there. Um, the tracking is not really the best for that. So this is kind of just like a super size mode is like for fun. Regularly it's actually a small pet. So that's why it's called tinyfox.xyz. Um, in, in case Amazon rejects alexapet.com, which it probably will. Um, so yeah, oh, there is also, for example, there are times when you don't want to have AR mode. You can also have a virtualized mode. There is a virtual living room again. Um, so um, kind of a possible best practice for AR sort of design is always have a mode where there is no computer vision access or where the user just doesn't, you know, want uh, camera usage. And this is kind of the virtual mode for the pet. It's just, it's at that point, just a virtual pet. Um, cool. So, uh, oh yeah, and it's coming soon for Echo Dot. Uh, so, um, the virtual mode is also kind of cool in the sense that you can enter, oh, I have to connect to Alexa. Um, well, you can then just like web you out it for other people to check it out. Um, so let's see, how much time do I have left? Um, oh, that's a lot of time. Cool. Um, so let's do some more live demos for fun. Um, meanwhile, any questions so far? Yeah, uh-huh. Can you see any interfaces uh -huh. better than like holding your phone? I mean, like the Google Glass didn't really take off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's things like the HoloLens um, and, of course, AR-based um, devices that it has a full screen. Um, in this case, the screen is not as ideal as it could be. It literally is just a screen that's like, I don't know, it, it feels like it's something floating, like kind of small like that, but um, it's it's basically projected through the visor. Um, and it has many cameras, um, which makes computer vision on it quite interesting. 
And uh, from that, you can recognize things and say hover interfaces of things of interest uh, on the things that you want to um, uh, interact with. So there's um, quite a lot of hardware coming out. Um, I often just name the HoloLens because a lot of them are kind of very similar, um, and that I guess the um, the most famous one that everyone seems to know. Um, so I feel like the phone is indispensable because um, at least currently these devices are all very bulky to wear. Sometimes in the future they might be contact lenses or bionic eyes or something. Uh, we really don't know whether that will happen or not. Um, when that does happen, um, I suppose it will be um, a lot more seamless. You can just like look at the um, exit sign. I, I mean, as a speaker, I can look at the exit sign and find out, oh, I have like 10 minutes left or something. Um, like, there's a lot of interesting sort of connected information that can be put on um, a lot of these uh, things that can be recognized. Um, so we had a lot of mirrors in this sort of fake house. I just wanted to do a magic mirror example for fun. Um, but in this case, um, this is perhaps a little bit on the geekier side. Um, there's probably not many people who are like kind of 3D modeling sort of like digital graphic arts people here. Um, so I created this at yeah, another hackathon in 24 hours where um, you can basically select different face dots and you can um, change the geometry of, like take any picture and change the geometry of it and stuff. So this case, I dragged the eyes downwards and that totally like changed the, um, changed the UV mapping and then made it look really weird. Um, so I think it's a lot cooler than just like face swapping because you can actually define um, the feature points you're interested in and stuff. Um, and um, of course you can like make really funny sort of um, like, you know, pictures and things from it, you know? Um, and for fun, you can also like try to make faces out of like raspberry pies or something. Um, okay, so... All right, I'm gonna just like raspberry pie this, and then um, okay, it's getting kind of hot, so let's see. Um, all right. Okay. Um, here we go. Um, all right. Uh oh. Um, that's my computer. But that would be great call. So, um, why not? Let's try to turn this into a face. Uh, of course, since it's not actually a face, um, it doesn't need to be a face <laughs> point. However, we can actually drag the dots around and stuff, and we can actually, um, for fun, define different faces. Um, so I'm going to, like, I guess, drag the eyes, eyes right here. Um, and turn off symmetry mode, you select everything, and then turn on multi-mode. Um, so I'm going to select like this dot here and move it to this corner for fun. I actually have no idea how this is going to turn out. I've never tried it on electronics before. Um, so it's going to be interesting. This is a, this is going to be experimental. Uh, yeah, this is probably very sort of like not, um, anthropomorphic or whatever it is called. Uh, it's, um, if I were to like try to like, you know, wear skin from a Raspberry Pi 3, um, <laughs> this is probably what it would look like. Um, I, I'm trying to like turn uh, one of these, um, like the Broadcom chip into like one of my eyes or something. But um, I don't know, it's like probably not the best. Yeah, because I guess, you know, these are squares, my eyes are less so. But um, this is kind of fun, I guess. Um, of course, it would be easier if I just took a picture of one of you guys and just like, hey, I can try out your face. But then that's not as exciting as trying to like, wear a raspberry pie on my skin, like literally on my skin. Um, but uh, anyways, I'll, I'll answer some questions as I try to like, you know, warp this. I, I like kind of multitasking. Um, so uh, any questions? Oh, oh yes, uh-huh. Oh yes, the first site. Um, uh, the first site is just areality3d.com slash IOT. Uh, I guess for probably to be nice, I should type that up. Um, and also my contact info, sure, I'll be kind of more practical as opposed to just uh, spend the time doing like a interesting experimental um, demo on like another hack app. Um, so, 
I'll just like type in really big letters um, that address here, so it's easier to see. Um, I don't know, 48? Um, full screen. Uh, okay, anyways, uh, that's big enough to see, right? Um, and here's my contact information. Um, how do I get these all on the same page? See, this is why I don't uh, usually use, I mean, the whole demo was on my own software because I have a lot of difficulty using other people's software. Uh, like, it usually it takes me longer to figure out how to like use other people's things. Um, there you go. Great. So this has like, I think, relevant information in closing. Um, cool. Um, come on. Okay, I need to stop being a perfectionist. Um, okay, great, the address is down there and then my contact info is there. Um, so I'm Yosin, um, that's every information that contact me. Um, I am also kind of, unfortunately or fortunately, known as a number of one person companies. Um, everything from education to like food holograms, restaurant stuff to um, virtual pets and also to like face tracking um, client apps as a service and also to augmented reality e-commerce. Um, so I won TechCrunch grand prize with this AR e-commerce sort of hack and that kind of led to a number of different variations of that. And also start in the art world too. Um, I also do a lot of contracting and consulting. Uh, so um, hopefully you guys gain some insights on kind of a generalized methodology to apply the augmented routing interfaces to internet things. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that whenever you do connectivity issues, you have basically data degradation. You have, I mean, you need repeaters when you're going long distances. Your data is never at 100% transmission. Um, even among short distances, like in your home, your ethernet connection is probably never at 100% signal. There's a lot of data loss. What's really fun about computer vision is that it's traveling at the speed of light um, with, I mean, it's, well, it's line of sight limited, but um, I think of it as like way faster than any sort of um, internet you can because literally it's traveling at the speed of light. And the next thing is you're limited by your processing power. But um, if you have kind of slow internet at home, it's actually probably faster to just like recognize something by computer vision locally um, at least the speed of light. And then the rest is limited by, um, other limitations, other limiting factors. Um, so another way to see an AR interface with Internet of Things is literally you have the power to access things at the speed of light, at least at the um, point of um, reading, identifying what that is. Uh, so yeah, this is, I guess, more or less um, in conclusion to my talk, the AR interfaces for the Internet of Things. Um, and um, feel free to come try out demos. Um, I also have like a ton and a ton of other augmented reality demos. Um, um, should I go back to demoing or sh keep this light on? Or maybe I can do both. Um, let's see. I think I can do multiple screens, right? Uh, if I turn this to not full screen, then I can do Multiple screens. Cool. Um, so, well, that's my information for those who still need that. Uh, and uh, that's my contact. And I guess I'm going to continue trying to see if I can wear my Raspberry Pi because this is just something I've like. I mean, I, I've actually um, this is something that's been in this box for a long time. I haven't looked at it since like October, since the hackathon. And then since it's here, I'm like, why not just try making that into a skin? So this is like, it's very serendipity based. You guys inspired me to try out this um, new um, face skin, face mask thing. It's fun. Uh, yeah, okay, uh-huh. you played with, um, I was thinking about the inputs when you were uh -huh. showing us the virtual keyboard for the Raspberry Pi. Yep, uh-huh. Have you played with the idea of being able to type on the virtual keyboard? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in this case, I thought it was easier just to use a traditional input because typing on a virtual input, at least on this interface, is you need to, uh, I, I'll, show that, I'll show that demo again so you can see what I mean, right? Um, I mean, it's literally like you would, it's almost like playing a, a game where you have to like type on these little tiny things. I, I do have like, from a long while ago, like a fully virtualized computer interface. Like, I think this is from seven or eight years ago. And then I was like hard, and that was like what, iPhone 4 or something. Uh, it was like hard to type on it. Um, it's definitely possible. Um, in fact, uh, you can 
have this be like a complicated like game or something with like as many raycast uh, hits number of inputs. Um, uh, but in this case, it's uh, because it's like an interface that's um, already um, very standardized. It's easier just to like use um, do the onboard keyboard. Uh, but pretty much, there's like no limit as to how fancy or how complicated your IoT uh, AR interface can be. Um, but a, a thing that's good to keep in mind is. Um, are there existing things that can make it easier? In this case, we want to input keyboard stuff. The uh, well, their on-screen keyboard is uh, usually sufficient. Um, cool. Uh, any um, other questions? Cool. All right. Um, I guess I will hang out here um, and um, feel free to um, tweet at me uh, at Yosen or. Um, yeah, cool. Grab a card? Yeah.